Welcome to my channel, your tutor Mariam is here. It's a 24th video of introductory physics one and the fifth video I'm gonna talk about the motion in two and three dimensions. In this uh, video, I'm gonna talk about the projectile motion and uh, what's the basic idea and what is the equation of motion at this point. If you are new to introductory physics one and like to learn more, hit the subscribe button and uh, like for more. You ready? Let's get started. Let's say I have a particle right here. I'm gonna analyze the position of the particle if particle move at this direction. So I'm gonna call this position as the first position, like one, and then I'm gonna write down the velocity. So here I'm dealing with two dimension, x and y axis, right? So if I write down the velocity in unit vector, my velocity v gonna be vx in i axis, right, in x axis, and gonna be vy in j, right? So at this point, if I'm gonna draw the vx and vy, my vx gonna be in positive direction, and then my vy gonna be in positive direction too. Because particle is moving upward, so my y, my v boy gonna be positive, and also is moving in the positive direction in x axis. So my v x gonna be positive as well. Now let me analyze the particle if it reach to its maximum. So at this point, my v x is still gonna be positive because. Uh, my particle is moving in the positive direction. However, at this point, my Vy gonna be zero. So this guy right here gonna be zero. And it's gonna be particle position two. So let's think about it this way. At this point, particle reached to its maximum, right? So it's like a fall free acceleration. In the fall free acceleration case, I have a particle right here, right? This is position one. Uh, and I'm gonna throw the particle up so it's reached to the second point, it's reached to its maximum, and then it, in its maximum, particle gonna come back to the same point it was. So it's gonna be at this point, right? So at the position two right here, particle velocity gonna be zero because at some point velocity reached to zero and then particle come back to the position it was. So it's gonna be the same case like position two here. So it's a fall free acceleration, but why particle is not falling down because there is a velocity in x axis. That's the reason it is not a fall free acceleration because there is a velocity in x um, axis. But what about the position three right here? My vx is still gonna be positive because particle is still moving in the uh, positive axis. However, my vy gonna be negative because at this point, a uh, particle is going down. So velocity also going down and the direction gonna be uh, in a negative axis. Another question you might see in your homeworks or exam gonna be, uh, is velocity decrease or increase? So let's go back to the position one. At this point, my particle is moving up, right, to reach to its maximum. So my velocity at this point increase, and also Vx and Vy are both positive, right? So at this point for V1, it's increase. My velocity increase. When it's reached to maximum, my Vy gonna be zero, and my vx gonna be in positive direction, right? And the most common question you see in your exam and homework, what is the v in y-axis? And the answer is gonna be zero. For the particle three, my 
vx gonna be positive and my vy gonna be negative, right? Let's think about it this way. So I have a particle is going up, is reached to its maximum, and it's come back to the same point it was, right? So I'm expecting my uh, velocity increase reach to zero and it's gonna be negative, right? Because at some point, my velocity here gonna be zero because particle is not moving anymore. Same with this uh, position here. It was zero, it's increased, reached to maximum, which is zero, come back to the same point. So I'm expecting velocity decrease here, right? Because if it increase and keep increase, how it can be reached to the zero, right? It doesn't make sense. So this is another way you can think about it. So at point three, my velocity decrease. So it's decrease. But what about the acceleration? Let me analyze the particle in the same position. So in position one, for the introductory physics one, there is no acceleration in x-axis. So there is only one acceleration and it's going to be in y-axis. And the direction going to be downward, a, y, right here. Okay? And it's going to be same for the second position. It's going to be a, y, this acceleration. And the same things going to be here. And the acceleration going to be downward. So you might have this uh, question, why you have the same acceleration and they all downward. This acceleration comes from the gravity. So it's going to be a y is going to be g equal to 9.8 meter per second squared. And they all are the same. And this is the only acceleration for the projectile motion. And again, there is no acceleration in x-axis. Now let me talk about the equation of motion. Let's say you have a particle here, and in the simple example, my uh, x going to be uh, equal to v times t plus x naught, right? But be careful here. At this point, your particle is not moving only in x direction. You have x and y axis, right? So you have to consider both. And here, your particle make an angle with the x and y axis. So the things you have right here is going to be in x axis, y axis, right? So it's going to be my vx, it's going to be me vy, and the particle is moving in this direction, right? So it was here, and then it comes here, comes here, and uh, keep going to reach to this position, right? So it has an angle, and I'm going to call it as a theta. So in chapter 2, in the vector, you learn how to uh, write the vector based on the angle. So let me write it down. For vx, what I have is going to be v cosine theta, right? And for vy, what I have is going to be v sine theta. This is what you learn in chapter 2. So now, if I substitute this equation in equation 1, so let's say this is the star equation, I'm going to substitute the star equation in equation 1. My x is going to be v cosine theta. I substitute v in this equation. So it's going to be v cosine theta times t plus x naught, right? And this guy is going to be my equation uh, equation of motion at this point. And then for the y-axis, my equation going to be this, right? So now I'm going to substitute this v naught here with this equation that I'm going to call it as a double star. So if I substitute double star in equation 2, then, I, then what I end up is minus half of g t squared plus v sine theta times t plus y naught, right? And this is going to be my equation at this point. 
You also see some equation as a time independent equation. Let me explain that. So again, I have a particle here and I'm gonna calculate the maximum distance particle can have. So this maximum distance in x direction gonna start from here and the final port. So it's gonna be initial point and the final port, which uh, call it as R and it's a horizontal position and if you'd like to calculate the horizontal position then it's a time independent equation is only depend on the theta acceleration and your initial velocity also you are able to calculate the maximum height at this point so it's going to be the position from here to here in the y direction and I'm gonna call it as H that's how it's written in your textbook and also this guy is time independent equation it's only depend on theta acceleration and velocity you might have a question what is the difference between this equation and the equation in the previous slide let me write it down again for the x-axis, what you have is like x is equal to v cosine theta times t plus x naught, right? That's what you have. And for the y-axis, what you have is like half of uh, g t squared plus v sine theta t plus y naught, right? So the difference between these two equations is like in this equation, I can calculate the displacement or position of the particle at any time I want, right? It's dependent on the velocity, angle, and also time. So I'm able to calculate it at any time I want. But for this equation, I only able to calculate the r which is the maximum displacement same with h and y at this point i can calculate the displacement at any time i want but for h it only gives me the maximum height in the next video, I'm going to solve a couple of examples about this uh, subject and hopefully by uh, solving a couple of examples, uh, help you to understand uh, how to use these equations. If you like my video, hit the like button and I'll see you in the next video.